Welcome to Wood Turning 201, Part 3. And this one we're going to complete the bowl. This is where we left it last time, and now we need to show you the third part, the part of completing the bowl, as we will do it in the 201 class. So, here's the steps. First thing they have to do is prepare a jam chuck, and I'll show you how that is done. And then we will reverse the bowl and place it on the jam chuck with support from the tailstock. And we'll remove, I'm going to say, most of the tenon. And cut off any portion that's still left over. There are other ways, but this is the way we're doing it in class. And then we will hand complete the base by sanding away any little nibs that remain. So what we're going to be using for tools, again, I still have my basic 3 8 bowl gouge, which we started with. I will be using a shallow fluted gouge in part of removing the uh, tenon uh, projection because it can get into smaller locations than the bowl gouge can. And to take that last little nib off, we'll use a saw and we'll actually cut it off. There are other ways, as I said earlier, but this is the way we're going to be doing it. Generally, we've used in our tailstock a live center sort of like this. But I'm going to switch off to a pointed live center. This is a 60 degree cone. The reason is not about holding power, but it gives me more, more access to cutting away material off of that last portion of the tenon. So let's get started on that and take this bowl out and work on the tenon. So we'll go on to the next step. This is an extension to the class. So this is stuff we did not spend a lot of time talking about in Wood Turning 201. But one of the other things that you may choose to do is to do the sanding and finishing of your bowl before you take the tenon off. In which case to sand internal and external we need to leave that tenon in place. And the way we've done it that works most effectively is to use what we call a reciprocal or inertial sander. This is a sanding disc that spins and it has a velcro pad which accepts sanding discs like this. So as the bowl turns in one direction, the sanding disc will rotate the opposite, create a random pattern of scratches, and it's much easier to achieve a final finish. One thing we do when we sand, we run at a fairly low speed. We're going to run probably right around 500 or so, about 400. Okay, first thing we have to do is mount that jam chuck. So we'll take the bowl out. And a jam chuck is no more than a piece of wood. I pre-fitted a tenon on this piece of wood, which fits my chuck. And now I need to do a couple of things to make it run perfectly. And one is to true up this edge. This corner right here needs to run perfectly true. And this face needs to be slightly hollowed out so that it does not touch the bottom inside of the bowl. So let me just make a couple of truing cuts here real quick. And I'm still at lay speed, which is about 1800. <coughs> I'm just going to quickly trim the outside. And I can hear that that was a little out of 
ground. Not very much. Same thing on the face. It's slightly hollowed. Scraping across that edge to make sure it's running true. That's all there is to this. Now, to mount my bowl, I can do this, but it can leave a mark. So I'm using a small, soft pad. This is a piece of router pad or drawer liner. Coming back up, and remember in the first section, I put this mark on here, and here is why I need it right now. I need to use it to be sure this blank is properly centered on the jam chuck. So I've gone back into that initial hole, tightened it, and as you can see, it's running true. So I'm going to position my tool rest so I can get in here and work on that tenon and take away most of it. Now I said I'm going to use my bowl gouge for part of it because I'm going to take the tool and push straight in towards the chuck. Not across, but down in to remove the majority of this mass. Straight down. As you can see, I can remove a large portion of that with my bowl gouge. I can come across here and take some of that off to also, riding across this face, very lightly. This is the same cut that we used on the outside of the bowl. I'm putting my tool against the wood, letting it right against this small shoulder and allowing it to cut itself. I'm not applying a lot of pressure this direction. I don't want that to move. I want to make sure this stays where it is. I want to make sure all this surface here is smooth, so I'm going to do a sheer cut to where I'm using the lower wing of the tool, handled down as little an angle as I can get it, and just pulling back. Take off any additional marks down here. And now because this is so small, I'm switching to a shallow fluted gouge, which will allow me to get in much closer down towards the jam chuck, same cut, small light movements. So we reduced it down as far as we can. And I'm going to get the tool rest out of the way and I'm going to go to a pull saw, the purpose of which is simply to cut off the remaining amount of this wood. I want the tool rest out of the way, I want the tailstock not engaged. And that's why I don't want to bang the teeth of the saw on anything. So what we have now, back this off a little bit farther, is we've got the piece already down to an area where I can sand or remove that with a small carving chisel or a little bit of sandpaper. So that's the steps in completing your first bowl. showed you some of the steps in sanding the bowl. Purpose of sanding is 
an order to approve the surface so that we can put a finish on. And there's three different levels of finish that you can consider. First one, of course, is just a wax finish of which everything from shoe polish on up will work. You apply the wax, buff it in, it uh, covers the wood, it makes the grain pop and it looks nice, but it's not a very lasting finish. The next thing we can do, which we use a lot in class, is an oil finish. Penetrates into the wood, does much of the same effect that the wax finish does. Provides a little bit more protection and can be easily replenished. For food safe products, an oil finish is generally what's recommended. For pieces that uh, maybe be for uh, display purposes, uh, we can put a hard finish on a surface finish most likely used is some sort of a varnish. And uh, what we've used the most in the class is Minwax Wipe On Poly, which contains an oil that penetrates and a urethane that will polymerize onto the surface and create a hard, shiny, polished finish. It takes many coats on the piece of wood that we just used in this uh, last video. Uh, it's a fairly porous wood, so the first three or four coats will sink in. And with sand between coats, add a second one, sand, add a third, and so on, until the level of gloss you're looking for is achieved. Uh, we prefer to use what we call a high gloss finish. Uh, those that are matte or semi-matte have uh, material added, generally uh, something that will just diffract the light. It creates a kind of a muddy thickness. Rather add something up to a full polish and then take steel wool or a sandpaper and bring it back down to matte if that's what you prefer. So finishing is outside of the realm of the class, but it is something that you've been asking about and you need to know more. I hope these videos have helped you to understand the basic steps. There are a lot more actions that could be employed as you develop more skill. And the other videos in our series which refer to uh, bowl turning may provide some additional information beyond what we would be covering in Wood Turning 201. Thanks for watching. I hope these help.